Buonasera, good evening. My name is Lillo Guarneri and I am the director of Italian Cultural Institute and Cultural Attaché of Italian Consul General in Sydney. As you know, the Institute is a body of Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs whose mission is to promote our language and culture through the organization of cultural activities. Tonight, on occasion of the Contemporary Art Day 2021, we are pleased to host a conversation between Italian artist Laura Cionci and the art critic Miriam Lado La Rosa, based in Melbourne. The talk will explore specific themes of Laura's work, the relationship between heart, life and nature, the notion of cura, which translates into care, but also healing and medicine, explored as a tension between the Western approach and philosophies and ancestral wisdom and knowledge, particularly dream and imagination as a solution for anxieties of the present. These topics are well and extensively expressed in the context of works by Laura that include the project Stato di Grazia, State of Grace 2018, and its latest interaction entitled Incubazioni Oniriche, Oniric Incubation 2021. The project Stato di Grazia brought the artist to travel from Italy to Colombia in 2018 and to Australia in 2019. During these journeys, Laura developed a series of installation, performances and workshop, which stimulate the imagination of the participants to produce a collective public artwork as well as a publication. Honoric Incubation was recently presented in Florence where Laura used, among others, a series of images that also refers to the text of Dante Alighieri, a tribute of 700 after the death of the great poet. Milia Melarosa is a curator and PhD candidate at the University of Melbourne, with over 10 years of experience working in the art field. Her research looks at the notion of gift exchange and also to guess the relationship in the heart of residency. In 2019, she co-created a cross-cultural exchange project between Sicily, Gippsland, and the community of Pepimenati in Northern Territory, a fantastic project supported by the Italian Culture Institute. I'm now pleased to announce possible future developments of this project in Sydney in 2022. And for this reason, I would like to invite the artist director of Casula Powerhouse Art Center, Mr. Craig Donaski, to say a few words. Please, Craig. Thanks, Lilo, and buona sera, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to join you before tonight's talk with Laura and Miriam. Um, as part of the long and growing relationship between Casula Powerhouse Art Center in Liverpool and the Instituto Italiano de Cultura. For many years now, we've partnered in presenting some of the best Italian cinema together. And I'm here to say that we look forward to expanding that great program into other art forms with some of the work you'll hear about from Laura and Miriam tonight. Well, whenever it can get into the country late next year, or perhaps the year after, given the uncertainties of these difficult times. For those who haven't had a chance to visit yet, Casula Powerhouse Art Centre is a big converted power station set on 22 hectares of parklands on the banks of the Georges River, just near Liverpool, with five galleries, a theatre where we show the Italian film screenings, a large function hall, various artists and makers spaces, and an excellent restaurant. Our audiences come from Southwest Sydney and beyond to see established and emerging artists from the incredible array of cultures that make up modern Liverpool. Our residents hail from 150 different countries and speak 140 different languages. And Italian is one of the most significant in the area, thanks to our long established Italian communities, which now run many generations deep. I believe the arts, cinema and food are the three key ways we build bridges between cultures. And we showcase all the arts, from visual arts to cinema to all of the performing arts, including theatre, dance, comedy, and so much more. 
So as a multi-art centre, we really look forward to collaborating with Laura and Miriam in public programs and other manifestations of the work that they'll be discussing tonight. And I hope you can join us for that when they do. In the meantime, please also join us next year for another fantastic season of quality Italian cinema when our regular screening series returns in real life early in 22. Um, so ciao and see you soon at Casula Powerhouse. Back to you, Lilo. Thank you, Greg. Um, we, we really hope that we will develop this project together. And uh, now, Laura, Miriam, welcome virtually to Sydney and let's start our conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lilo, and thank you, Greg. Uh, it's a pleasure to be again um, sitting here in the spaces of Istituto Italiano di Cultura, although this event is happening online. Uh, buongiorno, Laura. Uh, we are speaking across different time zones. Um, before we begin... Hi, Laura. Before we begin, uh, I would like to acknowledge that although this event is taking place place online. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Nam, Melbourne, where I'm a guest on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And so I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to uh, the traditional custodians of this land, acknowledging their continuing connections to land, waters uh, and culture. Uh, and so I would like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging for their hospitality. Um, a moment of housekeeping before we start this conversation. If you have any questions uh, throughout the talk, please use the chat function um, and we will endeavor to address your questions at the end of the talk. Uh, this uh, event is being recorded, so please be aware of that. Um, so Laura, I'm going to invite you to share your screen. Yes, and I'm... And present uh, Azzurra Muzzoligro uh, with me, uh, translate for me the, the answers and final uh, yeah, so, presentation. So uh, Laura's throat is not feeling very well, so I will try to, you know, um, translate uh, simultaneously. So that's my presence here today. <laughs> Thank you, Azura. And uh, at the question time, we will try to deliver this in a hybrid mode. So a little bit of Italian, a little bit of English, uh, and make sure that everybody understands and feels uh, included. Um, so while you uh, share your screen. Um, yeah. yeah, so we're gonna try just, just uh, confirm that you can see properly. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, so let's begin with introduction. We had this lovely introduction from Lilo. Um, and would you like, Laura, to say a few words about yourself and maybe start by telling us where you are located at the moment, and then we can dive into your work. Okay, okay. so pretend <laughs> I'm Laura. <laughs> okay, so we are connected from Milan now. And um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the director of the Italian Institute of Culture, Lillo Guarnieri, for welcoming us to present Dream Code during the Amachi Contemporary Day and for believing in this vast research project that I have been carrying out for a few years now. I would also like to thank Danilo Sideri from IIC. Thanks, of course, to Miriam, with whom I have been collaborating and comparing notes for a couple of years now. And also thanks to Craig Donarski from Casula Powerhouse. At the moment, I am in Milan working on an iteration of the project State of Grace that will be entitled Of Roots and Frequencies, Memories of a Crossing for Fondazione Pini. Wonderful. Since you've mentioned State of Grace, uh, let's begin from this project. Uh, what is the project about? When and why did you start it? So this project, was, this project was born in various visual forms. It came to life through a series of performances that took place between Milan and Melbourne in 2008 and 2019, uh, sorry, 2018 and 19, and late, later materialized in a book that was released in Italy in March, 2019. 
which collects the life experiences of a very particular moment of my life, a moment of transformation. This project was born out of necessity, the need to survive, not meant metaphorically, but literally. So what do you mean by the need to survive? Can you elaborate on that? I mean, a physical need and a spiritual need. The physical need to survive started in 2015 when I discovered I had cancer and embarked on a journey of pain, but also healing. The spiritual necessity, which is also conceptual, is the need to search, dig into our history and try to reestablish the link between human being and nature that from industrial revolution onwards has been progressively lost. I'm interested in celebrating the knowledge that precede the medicine that, that we know in modern societies, the wisdom of many civilizations of the past, the relationship between human being and the earth that today is disappearing. I'm also interested in the idea of healing through acts, experiences, ceremonies, which is the simplest way to begin a process of recovery in touch with nature and its elements. These ideas are the foundations of State of Grace. So let's try to unpack this idea uh, further. What is the State of Grace, which, which gives the title to the project, and what is the link between suffering and art? The state of grace is transformation. There is a concept, a concept in alchemy, the nigrido, which means the darkest point and is seemingly impenetrable. This state is experienced unconsciously and can only be deciphered long after it has been experienced. It is a state of ecstasy, enlightenment. It is also like meeting your worst monsters. I think everyone has had or will have the opportunity to experience a state of grace at some point in their life. The question is realizing it, becoming conscious of it. The sense of peace and tranquility come after the experience. The light exists precisely because it is immersed in darkness. The darkness, the trauma is the state of grace. Take the religious representation of the martyrs. Those are representations of state of grace, of ecstasies and illuminations. In Christian iconography, it is the representation of Christ in the way of the cross, while it, his resurrection is the result. Another way of thinking about this is through the body. When for some reason you have a physical rash, whether it's a skin, a definite pain or inflammation, that's actually good because your whole body and psyche are working for the problem to be expelled and you can act on it. Art to me is that outlet, like an almost uncontrolled explosion at first. It takes the form and connotation of the trauma experienced. On the other hand, there is the expulsion and on the other, the physical realization of the art outside of the artist, recognizable, finally visible, and useful for individual and shared learning. We are nothing but channels. We absorb circumstances, stories, lifetime, and people, and then rework them and vent them out. Art tells us who we are and creates powerful empathies, collective movements generated by a common feeling of origin. On page 17 of your book, State of Grace, you write, uh, and I'm gonna quote now from the book, art like culture and intellectuals should go in one direction, no longer to try and raise awareness since time has run out, but to accelerate this change, to ignite the awareness that what we are experiencing is more than the beginning of the end, end of quote. Uh, what does this mean in concrete term? Uh, how do you achieve this? 
as we live our present, we become aware of the deformations that surround us. They are environmental, social, political deformations. The compulsions we have to speed up our movement and our commitments, whether professional or personal in nature, overtakes the results, makes them poor and ineffective in the present state of affairs. La cura, the cure, of which I speak, is not only understood as a cure aimed at healing an existing element, but also at taking the time to cherish, to complete and absorb. In order to act, we need to start from awareness. Drastic changes are always complex and take time to be accomplished. Above all, they need shocks to be activated. As far as I'm concerned, these shocks are always traumas that in suffering led me to reflection and constantly change my priorities. I believe in the smallest intimate activations, that is those fragile in intuitions that arise from a different experience than usual. The approach to an unknown space that may be uncomfortable and share it with other people who live perhaps in the same space. If an intimate activator is turned on in an exchange, a change is already underway. The urgency is in the setting, in the reception, and therefore in its intimate activation from which the change springs. You mentioned that between 2015 and 2018, you embarked on your own personal journey of healing. Uh, where did this journey take, take you and what did you find out? I found that the journey is still ongoing. So I can't answer this question. The answer is probably at the end of this life. I do know that Knowing I had cancer has amplified my choices, has made them more drastic, and has removed veils. Shaking is essential to me. This shaking physically moves me in search of territories and exchanges. Unexpected encounters deviate and divert my path. But then I persist to be surprised to change every time and I travel light in order to find my roots. Okay, so let me rephrase my previous question. Can one be healthy in a sick world? Tell us about your, your experience. While before the industrial revolution which impacted many parts of the world and led to global changes, it was more spontaneous to stay connected with the whole ecosystem Today, we have to work hard to stay in touch with it while still making an unsustainable impact. We live in inflammation. This inflammation affects our body and our psyche. Nature for billions of years has found a way to adapt to its environment and therefore survive a global inflammation in order to regenerate itself. We have not. We do not yet have this knowledge. We are in self-combustion without being, being fully aware of it, of it. We are not like animals. We are not like plants. We have within us ancestral information that builds our essence, the fauna. And we have cellular physical information that builds the more physical part, flora. But we are overwhelmingly dissociated from both. My experience is in constant flow, finding a balance between caring, finding a connection with the cosmos and living beings and living with other human beings, my relationships, work, bureaucracies. Hybridizing these contents to survive is what I spend most of my time on. You can't untie yourself from either one or the other hemisphere. One cannot choose to be anima or animals. They both have to live, cohabit. 
Your journeys of healing made you travel a lot and visit different places, uh, including Australia. While reading the State of Grace book, one can feel the sense of loneliness that accompanied you during your journey. At one point, you write again in the book, and I quote, I ask mm -hmm. myself, is it better to drone happily without awareness or to survive living alone on a deserted beach? Did you answer this question at all? Uh, is it possible to wake up in a new place without feeling like an outsider? I think I'm still on the beach trying to figure out how to make the happy drawing coexist with the desert. <coughs> and for now, I can tell you, no, it is not possible to wake up without feeling like an outsider. So let's speak more directly now about the visual elements that compose State of Grace. Um, how does it unfold through various medias, forms, and modes, but also through different places, territories, and countries? Uh, what is the connection between the places where State of Grace occurred so far? You use the magic word, connection. Working through and with frequencies, Everything gives off specific signals, and so everything varies depending not only on location, but also on the people involved, the times and the circumstances. The only invariable constant is the connection that is created between the people who share an exchange. Creating experience to generate connections and hopefully also awareness is the role that I think I can play as an artist. Through performance, video, painting, installation, and a strong relationship with the public and with the territory, I try to draw a map that aims to define this state of grace, which I believe is common to different people in different parts of the world. <coughs> Be this Italy, Colombia or Australia. In the work, I attempt to trace a visual path that highlights these similarities through elements such as ritual, mysticism, trance, sound and movement, and through images that arise from the unconscious within dreams and represent our deepest connection with the earth and with the cycle of life. For instance, when I developed the performance for the first time in Australia, it was wonderful. I was at Frankston Art Center in Victoria. There were about 100 people participating, including the mayor of the city, and everyone wanted to be involved. Although participation in the actual performance was not mandatory because the performance itself was difficult. It required full engagement, both physical and mental of the participant. It was really moving to play music and tell stories of travels for so many people that trusted me. Everyone was laying down in the theater venue. There was silence all around. When we completed the performance with the people who participated actively, many others from the audience came to me to tell me about their dreams or to simply share their enthusiasm for this experience. It was a small experiment, but very successful. Another example is the process, is the project Reciprocal, Reciprocal, that I developed in Melbourne. I walked along the lanes of the Melbourne General Cemetery, reading my texts, and metaphorically, I was walking out of it on my own legs, alive. Now, since you mentioned dreams, uh, the latest iteration of State of Grace is called uh, Incubazioni Oniriche, which translates in English into oniric incubations. It deals with experiencing <coughs> dreams to address the anxieties and struggles of our contemporary world. Can you tell us about the development of this project in Florence, in Italy? How did you engage with the city, the public space, and the community? Oniric Incubation is a, is a diffused art project that I brought to Florence 
during this year's edition of Estate Fiorentina. Curated by Non Riservato with the contribution of the city of Florence and the support of Base Digitale, the project had its concrete beginning at Murate Art District. It was in this space that I involved a group of participants in a shared creative process. So by exploring the themes of the oniric, the attempt was to wave a thread, connecting the personal experiences of each to nature. The work composed of a series of beasts and wild beasts, natural and anthropoformic elements, images linked to the symbolism of nature, some directly referring to the work of Dante Alighieri. This is the visual repertoire that inspired the creation of se several posters evoking the sacred and the mythological. In this way, oniric incubation penetrated the, street, the streets of the city where everyone could interface with these fantastic visions suggested even unconsciously by these images on the posters, passerby could discover how these works were made by framing a QR code that gave access to, vid to contents of the project. I usually employ relational practices in my work, giving shape to new creative processes linked to people energy, but also to the territory. So why this title, Incubazioni Oniriche? Incubazioni Oniriche originates from the ancient practice of a ship using incubations, um, 293 BC on the Tiber Island. It is nothing more than a stage in the path I have now taken since 2018. In the Italian language, the term incubation defines a period in which an important event is being prepared. In the book From Dream Incubation in the Temples of Asclepius to Dream Incubation in Young uh, Gun Psychodrama, Maurizio Gasso writes about Asclepius' practices, and I quote, it was what we might call an imaginal psychotherapy, where the soul and the body of the patient were not treated, treated separately and where an active position of the incubant was required apt to produce the transformative images, end of quote. The care of the self and the value of the ritual and identity formed through experience are the foundations of a research and need that is not only personal, but also collective. When we meet to share our, our dreams and talk about them, this process triggers a network of connections that amplify the images, makes them strong and generate empathy as we work and reveal ourselves. The people who participate do not know, what, do not know one another, but they rely on the collective images with confidence to release some hidden traces of experience, desire, trauma. In this process, the group that is created is as, as important as, as the space in which they act. The important issue of the practice is to work on the thresholds of the states of consciousness. Living an entire day in sleep wake is definitely out of our daily conditions. And it is tiring. It deforms time, which acquires a strong component of relativity. It is subjective, subjective for each participant, while generally we are all immersed in a single speed. Moreover, we create an unusual balance of the cerebral hemisphere in which we feel free to experiment with our imagination, being surprised by unexpected imagin imaginative elements. In this work, I make myself the bearer of the experience, lived in first person, acquired and finally released through my means. 
This is not an analytical or shamanic session, but a personal reappropriation of a space that is mostly unknown and that lives and feeds within us. A space that offers us information, solutions, and that is there for everyone to see. The great exchange between me and the participants traveled through the images that came out of the experience. Incredible places, encounters, animals, plants, fantasy beings, cultures, people, objects, and symbols. A gigantic container of works that are endlessly generated if you have the right conditions to do so. On the occasion of Dante Alighieri's 700th anniversary, you introduce a new component in the work, linking it in part to the text of Dante Alighieri. And Dante Alighieri, for those who don't know him, uh, is one of Italy's greatest author of all times. How did you make this happen? I underline the similarity of the project with an altered state of consciousness that Dante knew very well. He was said to be suffering from narcolepsy. This often led him to a low brain frequency, the same one that I try to recall during the incubation meeting. It is precisely in those mental spaces mentioned several times in the work that Dante found himself when recounting his encounters thus mixing what he wanted to express politically and socially with settings, natural forms and fantastic situations. Bringing back this exercise of oniric care that has surprising results on me, I approached the so-called word below through the drum and therefore a vibration linked to the earth a journey that links personal experiences to natural representation and symbo symbologies, imagining the same state that brought Dante in the most incredible journeys of his life. And if he too had experienced an incubation of Asclepius in order to come to the knowledge of the three other worlds, the presence of animals in the comedy is also incredibly broad. It is a continuous and varied presence, which opens in the first canto of Inferno, which with the lion and the she-wolf, the so-called three beasts, and the rise as far as the beast that the, angle, that the angels are compared to in the Empireo, as happens in dream journeys where the participants meet in a series of important animals, as it happens in many moments for Dante in his comedy. Each animal represents a particular state, a characteristic of the characters, of the places, of the circles of hell, as much as in the spaces of purgatory and in heaven. Tell us a bit more about uh, the use of posters in this work, uh, which recall an artistic tendency that uh, has been relevant in Italy since the 1970s. The poster suggests uh, ideological or political interventionism, but also reminds us of the world of advertising and marketing. Um, you instead use the poster to focus on a very personal dimension that is the space of the dreams and the relationship with oneself and <coughs> Why this, why this choice? Because the dream affects everyone and travels through everyday life. We store information while we are awake and we run from one side to the other. We meet people, we reflect, we laugh, we cry, we get angry, we act. During the night, our double comes to life processing the experience, transforming it in order to give it back and somehow build who we are in the daytime. The poster is a physical realization of the space and threshold between being awake 
and sleeping. It is similar to occult advertising where you unwittingly embed the image or phrase, the word and carry, carry it inside you. It influences your psyche. In this case, it's images and words that come from other individuals' dreams. I like to think that people can connect as it happens during the oniric incubation meetings. Another motivation for the choice of the urban diffusion through posters was dictated by the use of relational practices that Non Reservato also carries out with artists and projects. The common goal is to create infiltrations of contemporary art absolutely out of its classic elitist concept, context, starting from the process, passing through the execution, and then to the final result. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zura and Laura. Um for answering these questions. Uh, before we uh, bring this conversation to a close and start opening up the floor to questions, uh, I believe we wanted to show you a video uh, of one of the iterations of State of Grace. Uh, Laura, would you like to show that yourself or do you want me to display the uh, video? Wait a moment. Maybe it's better you because I can, I don't know where. Okay, no problem. Where is it? Just give me a second, I will do it. Okay, thanks. Bear with me, everyone. Thank you. 
perfect. I hope that you could hear the sound. I was a little bit concerned about that. <laughs> um, once again, thank you so much, Laura and Azzurra, um, for answering my questions. Um, I'm, I'm going to see whether we have any questions already in the chat, not yet, but thank you, Craig, for your comment. Uh, while, you, while you make up your mind about possible questions, I wanted to say a couple of words about the possible uh, future iteration of this project here in Australia in 2022. Uh, so Laura and I, as we mentioned at the beginning of the talk, uh, I've, I've been working together for over a year and a half already, uh, sharing notes, ideas, um, and discussing possible prospects to bring State of Grace once again to Australia in 2022 with the support and the participation of the Italian Institute of Culture uh, and hopefully uh, in collaboration with uh, Casula Powerhouse uh, in Sydney. So the way we imagine this project for 2022 is to unfold um, in, a, in a series of different forms, uh, including a workshop uh, that would take place uh, in, in collaboration with the people that gravitate around Casula Powerhouse, uh, with the local inhabitant uh, of, of the place where the uh, art center is located, including also a possible performance, uh, as you've seen in the video and uh, throughout the talk, Laura works uh, quite a lot uh, with performative elements in her works. And finally, uh, with a display, with an exhibition of the works that would result from this intervention in the, in the territory. So while we wait for uh, some more possible questions, Laura, do you want to, I, I'm going to ask you one question. Uh, do you want to um, unpack a little bit more? Tell us a little bit more about your process of working, site specifically, uh, when you visit a, a specific territory. Grazie, Miriam. Vado a rispondere in italiano e brevemente per causa della mia voce. E Azzurra mi tradurrà. E la cosa importante eh, di questo lavoro è eh, soprattutto il lavoro eh, all'interno dei territori e insieme alla comunità. Ed è per questo che, ehm, che acquisisce caratteristiche ulteriori e diventa eh, specifico, appunto, sai, specifiche e ehm, racchiude nuove mh, forme e nuove eh, realtà eh, nella, nel processo, nella progettualità e, e quindi nella realizzazione. <coughs> ok, so the important thing is uh, mainly, let's say, the relationship with the territories and the communities uh, of, in which, let's say, the work uh, takes place. This is what makes the work site specific and mm -hmm. generates new forms uh, that you know are uh, derived from the process. La cosa diciamo che, che, uh, che credo in cui credo fermamente è che l'arte oggi è, deve essere uh, un'esperienza eh, e questa esperienza può avvenire soltanto con l'interazione con l'altro. Dunque, questa interazione viene a crearsi quando appunto c'è l'incontro, quindi l'incontro con la comunità, con le persone che vorranno, che incuriosite si avvicineranno al, diciamo, alla chiamata, e, ma anche con le persone che lavorano in quegli spazi, quindi le stesse persone che si occupano del centro culturale, che, che già hanno una rete e quindi già lavorano e vivono sul territorio per creare quindi un progetto che um, è un piccolo seme e da questo seme poi possa nascere appunto questa pianta che uh, in questo caso è Dream Code. Okay, so um, I believe that art today uh, needs to be an experience. So it is through the interaction with the other uh, through the encounter with the communities in the first place, you know, with the people that gravitate around the art center, the people themselves that work in the art center and center and the networks they have around them. 
uh, you know, uh, so this is what generates the project and the project uh, can be seen as a seed uh, that then later generates a plant, which would be dream code. Thank you. Uh, we have a question coming from the audience. I'm going to read it. Um, your iteration uh, and I suppose interaction as well with Dante's work reminded me of a book from René Guénon, The Esoterism of Dante. Is there any connection or, or inspiration there for you, Laura? Do you know this book? Quale, quale libro? The, the, esoterism, the Esoterism of Dante. L'Esoterismo di Dante. Ah, sì. No, non lo conosco il libro, però lo cercherò. Eh, no, ho fatto semplicemente delle, in realtà, piccole ricerche su... E comunque, insomma, non è un segreto, ecco, che Dante avesse questo problema narcolettico. Eh, e, e mi sono agganciata alle mie ricerche sulle frequenze cerebrali, eh, appunto, quindi all'abbassamento all di queste frequenze e quindi a questa condizione psicofisica che crea questo tipo di visioni, in poche parole. Quindi ehm, per me è importante sempre... <ride> um, appunto entrare dentro l'esperienza non del personaggio in quanto tale perché ne abbiamo e lo conosciamo sotto, sotto tutte le sue forme no? Uh, proprio anche grazie anzi soprattutto grazie appunto alla, alle sue opere ma uh, come essere umano e quindi come lui ha sfruttato questo tipo di um, tra virgolette problematica ma in realtà una sorta di entrata in un, in un mondo, una visione e quindi un, uno spazio fuori dal tempo che poi lui ha inserito invece nel suo tempo, quindi ha utilizzato gli spazi delle visioni oniriche per inserire all'interno eh, le sue opinioni politiche e sociali in realtà. Okay, so uh, I did not uh, know this book uh, particularly, um, but I will look for it. Uh, I relied, uh, you know, on my uh, personal um, uh, sense of uh, Dante's work. I mean, Dante's work is uh, very widely publicly known. So, uh, you know, I dig into his uh, work and try to find this uh, these oniric, um, uh, let's say, experiences that he was uh, uh, experiencing um, through these uh, low frequencies. So I, what I tried to do was to enter into the experience of, the, uh, of Dante, not as a, you know, as a character, let's say, as, as, as an author, as we know him, but as a human being. So uh, mainly thanks to his work. Uh, so I uh, try to enter into this space outside of time that he created in his work and, uh, you know, and his uh, oniric visions through which he was expressing his political and social views. I find very interesting as a researcher uh, being uh, absolutely keen to investigate uh, cross-cultural relationships and dialogues, uh, how we often uh, transpose and transport certain concepts from one framework of reference to another. What I mean is Dante Alighieri is absolutely a super renowned figure all over the world, but I believe that the relationship that people in Italy have with Dante Alighieri is extremely different, or at least it's partially different than uh, the relationship that people could have in different parts of the world. So I'm very curious to see what, when and whether we will bring this project to Australia, what would be the reaction of the public here if we continue to follow that path of establishing this connection uh, with that figure or not? So it's more than a question, it's uh, sort of like a comment. Um, and if you would like to react to that, Laura. Cioè, capire come verrà, diciamo, eh, accolto in Australia mm. una figura come Dante, quindi che, diciamo... Ma eh, in realtà noi non veniamo in Australia a presentare Dante Alighieri, eh, bensì eh, questo... Eh, questa parte, diciamo, dello sviluppo di Dante Alighieri è stato... 
eh, presentato <coughs> per il settecentenario e quindi il progetto dell'estate fiorentina prevedeva una visione sulla vita sulle opere di Dante e quindi questa è stata la mia personale visione il mio personale lavoro su Dante eh, quello che mi interessa eh, è portare l'esperienza eh, all'altro e, e l'esperienza che parte sempre dalla cura quindi ehm, la scusa di lavorare in un contenitore come l'arte contemporanea ehm, mi dà l'opportunità di eh, far entrare in contatto eh, alcune persone che ehm, senza saperlo eh, si trovano in uno spazio di cura e, e iniziano un processo, possono iniziare un processo di cura attraverso gli spazi onirici, attraverso la psiche, attraverso lo sviluppo di immagini che hanno una forte rappresentazione personale, quindi è uno sviluppo personale eh, che poi eh, si può eh, ehm, amplificare e, e trasformare a livello appunto <coughs> a livello visivo ehm, per, eh, per l'altro, per chi non ha realizzato l'esperienza e quindi poi si crea questo circolo continuo eh, tra il visitatore, chi guarda e chi ha, ha fatto l'esperienza ed è lui, le, chi ha fatto l'esperienza diventa quasi il protagonista, per cui è lui che coinvolge poi altro pubblico e immerge l'altro pubblico raccontandosi e raccontandolo e quindi non c'è più soltanto la figura dell'artista che rappresenta e propone il progetto, ma l'artista è solo la scintilla che fa scattare un meccanismo collettivo. Okay, so uh, yeah, I would like to, you know, specify that uh, the part about Dante was uh, specifically developed uh, in Florence because last year was uh, 700 years from Dante's death, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So there was all this celebration about Dante. Uh, But let's say Dante is uh, not at the core of the project. Uh, what I'm really interested in is to bring the, the, this experience to the other. So, uh, and starting from the healing. Uh, so I use uh, contemporary art as a sort of uh, excuse uh, to work on healing uh, between people and through the oniric process. So, uh, you know, it is about a personal development. Um, uh, um, so, um, who, the, the person who makes the experience is actually the protagonist of the experience and is the people that, uh, the person that then uh, involves other persons. So uh, this also means a transformation of the role of the artist who is no, no longer the protagonist of the experience, but is a sort of a trigger. It's a sort of, a, you know, a starting uh, element of a process. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So is it safe for us to say that it is a process of co-creation in, in this particular project that take place in this particular project? Co-creazione, sì, è un processo di co-creazione. Sì, uh, sì è, è, io, io sarei una sorta di guida e, e di contenitore in realtà in cui poi eh, sia le persone che fanno l'esperienza ma anche chi ruota intorno all'esperienza eh, genera le opere, eh, anche la struttura stessa, per cui è chiaro che c'è sempre un, una base che io porto ma eh, spingo sempre per poter realizzare qualcosa di nuovo e di esattamente specifico del luogo e delle persone che incontro. Ok, so um, myself as an artist uh, I would define uh, I would define myself as an artist as a guide or as a container of the experience. So the people that actually participate to the experience are the ones who are generating the works. Uh, 
uh, and the structure of the words. So what I try to do is to make this process as specific as possible to that context and to those people participating. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, and thank, thank you, Laura, for this live translation. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we are running out of time, so we have to bring this to a close, but I truly look forward to receiving you here in Australia uh, with uh, the Italian Institute of Culture, of course, and hopefully in collaboration with Casula Powerhouse. And I, I'm going to give the, um, the stage to Lilo at this point. Yes. Um, well, just to add some, uh, some points, and by uh, reading uh, Stato di Grazia, uh, I have developed the belief that Laura has given to her artist research a prophetic vision and holistic approach. And I think that what we need in art nowadays is an holistic and balanced approach that need to be transmitted to, to our life. So when I, I have spoke with, with Laura, I never met her, but I have spoke with her by phone and um, she gives me the idea that task nowadays is, uh, can be, again, uh, something that gives us uh, um, a cure, so it gives us a, a sort of care, a sort of um, um, holistic and balanced approach to our life. So I, I decided this project can, could be, again, in, in Australia, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we will uh, reach this uh, this uh, this goal. So um, I really thanks um, Laura and Azura for um, this conversation with Miriam. Of course, thank you, Miriam, for for your help. Uh, thank uh, Craig for uh, help us to realize this project. And uh, thanks to all people that uh, is uh, without uh, with us uh, tonight. Because after one year of a webinar and presentation live, uh, we, we really need to, to, to see a girl in person uh, again uh, and soon here in the Institute in, in Australia. So thank you all of us uh, and uh, ci vediamo presto in uh, a Sydney. See you soon, thank Lillo. you very much. Grazie, grazie. grazie. Thank you. Ciao Lillo. Grazie, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao a tutti. Buonanotte, ciao.